Jesus. All right, number two. Indirect proof. You guys didn't, well, I showed you an example last time with more exponents, but now you want all syllogism. Anyway, yes, you are going to do one on the test, but like I told you, all you really have to do is fill in the blanks. You don't have to like write a paragraph yourself. Because for a few years, I had them write their own paragraphs, and it's like, oh, all hell was breaking loose. So I can change that. So here is the law of syllogism. P implies Q. Q implies R. Therefore, what? P implies P R. P implies R. Now, should I start making truth tables? No, 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 this is an indirect proof. Like the other two ways, then you make a truth table. But this, you're not making a truth table. So again, let's review. What does it mean if an argument is valid? That means if this is true and this is true, this will be true also. So an indirect proof starts by, a, let's suppose that this statement is false. So the first step in every indirect proof is suppose whatever the conclusion is, whatever this is, P implies R is false. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this into the premises. Now remember, these two are true statements, and you're going to keep working with it until you get a contradiction. So if this state, what kind of statement is this right here? Conditional. It's a conditional statement. Can we make any conclusions about whether P is true or false or R? P is true. Yeah. And again, R if a false. conditional statement is false, when is the only time that happens? When the first one is true and the second one is false. Did you, did you guys get that part of these? Yeah. That was the hardest part. So then you say, then P is true and R is false. Did you guys write that? Yep. Yeah. Now you take that into here until you get some kind of contradiction. Okay, so what, what can I do? Well, you want to work with this one or this one? Premise one or premise two? This premise one. Premise one. Okay, premise one. Now, if this entire statement is true, which is a conditional statement, and P is true, then what can you say about Q? True. It true. has to be true. Because if Q was false, then wouldn't this whole statement be false? Because it's conditional? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Q must be true in premise number one. So now we know Q is true. Now, if this statement is, also, is true, and it's a conditional statement as well, and, it's, and Q is true, what can you say about R? True. Hence, R must be true in, uh, in, in premise number two. So R must be true, because in order for a conditional statement to be true, if the first one is true, the second one has to be true, right? Does anybody see a contradiction? R is true. Yeah, right here. Look. Right here says R is false, but over here says R is true. No can. So that's your contradiction. So contradiction. That's your goal. Your goal is to get a contradiction. R cannot be both true and false. Therefore, the argument must be valid. There you go. That's an indirect proof. Yes? Do we have to use that vocabulary on the test? Were you here two minutes ago? <laughs> you don't have to write a paragraph on the test. What's going to happen on the test? You just got to fill in the blank. So it's going to be like this. Suppose blank is blank. Then P is blank and R is blank. So Q must be blank in premise blank. Hence, R must be blank in premise blank. Contradiction blank. <laughs> R cannot be both blank and blank. Therefore, the argument is blank. All you have to do is fill in blank. Okay. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about the paragraph one. You just fill in blank. Can you guys do that? Yeah, easy. Unless you don't know what's going on. No, it's not going to be, no, contradiction. Contradiction blank then. Should oh. I put a period or an exclamation mark? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> All right, number 2B, 3C. Deduce a valid conclusion. Okay, let's do 3C. 3C. 
oh, I know the problem is you guys cannot translate that into symbols. That's what I told you guys. Now, the disjunction of C and A. What does dis disjunction mean? Or. or. So C or A. Did you guys write that down? Yeah. Because you're going to get several of these that are going to be worth like eight points each. So if you, mm -hmm. if you just botch up one, it's like a fatal error, minus eight. <gasps> a is a sufficient condition for not D. So it, what does that mean? Does that mean A implies not D? Or does that mean not D implies A? Or it doesn't matter? A it matters. Oh, it matters. And, and which one is it? A implies not D. How do you know? Besides, it's in the notes. Now, here, I'll teach you this. And then D is a necessary condition for B. So is that D implies B? B implies D, or it doesn't matter? B implies D. It matters. B implies D. So that's, yeah, exactly. That's what that's for. If you don't do it correctly, that's a fatal error. Now, this is what I teach my math team. Like, if P is a sufficient <coughs> condition for Q. How do we remember that this is P implies Q? Yeah. Because the F, see how the F's point that way? <laughs> oh. like P to Q? Yeah. P is a, let's not use, let's use R is a necessary condition for S. Now, how do we know that means S implies R? The Y. Except that's not how you spell necessary. <laughs> necessary. Ne necessary. Because look at the Y. The Y points that way. Oh, yeah. See? From S to R. That's how we remember it on the math team. So what are you guys going to do? That. I don't care what you guys do. Just make sure you get it straight. Now, the key to doing these arguments is you want to change everything to conditional statements. So the only one that's not conditional is that one. Can I change an or statement to a conditional? Yeah. Yes, they gave the first, leave the second one alone. Have we got that one down? I'm, just, I'm telling you right now, that's important. If you don't know this one, you might lose like between 16 and 24 points on the test. Right there. Unless you can come you can derive it so I'll make the two table and figure it out. Okay, so now I have three conditional statements. What can I conclude from that? What do you, what do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be just a single statement or is it going to be like a, like a, like another conditional statement? Conditional. Yeah, it's going to be another conditional because we're going to use the law of syllogism, right? A implies B. B implies C. C implies D. What can I conclude? A implies D. So there's no way you can conclude, conclude just a single thing, right? It has to be another conditional state. So all we have to do is line them up like this. So how do you want to start? Well, notice that I see two A's. I see, I see two D's. So either you're going to start it with either not C or B. Which one do you want to go with? Not C. Not C? Let's go with Oh. <laughs> OK, you want to do it out? OK, let's start with this one. Not C implies A. Now, in order to use the law of syllogism, we must now have not A implies something. Why did I even go? <laughs> That's it. So anyway, now I need A implies something. Where right here? A implies not D. Now I need not D implies something. So what do I do with this one? You contrapositize it. So you get not D implies not D. So look, gorilla implies banana. Banana implies armadillo. Armadillo implies horse. Therefore, gorilla implies horse. It's easy. It's just that right there. Mr. Park, what if I wrote this as my answer? B implies C. Is that also correct? Yeah, because that's the contrapositive of that. Mr. Park, I have this as my answer. Not B or C. <laughs> Can I write that? Yes, because they're logically equivalent. Mr. Park, can I write this as my answer? Not B and not C. <laughs> yes, because that and that are logically equivalent. All four of these answers are correct. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you how to write your answer. So that's why you've got to read the directions. If you don't read the directions, you're going to feel pain. It's going to happen. Okay, everybody understand? So, so what's important in this? You have to know logically equivalent statements. That's why I gave you the list of notes. All right. See, I'm teaching you all. I'm also teaching you all the, our math team secrets. Hey, wait a minute. 
We got the math team secrets on video. What if somebody from Punahou watches this video? We're done. Because <gasps> no, because these videos are public. They're all over YouTube. Mr. Park Math. <laughs> That's right. It's Mr. Park Math. How do you know? <laughs> That's why I watched a 48 minute long one yesterday. Okay, number five. The moon is full. Now, what do you want to call the moon is full? F? F. Only if it is cold. C then? So F, if and only F, C. If the goblins are out, then it's Halloween. You can use whatever letters you want. It is cold. Il est très froid. <laughs> if it is Halloween, I'm just trying to remember my French here, then the moon is not full. Therefore, what, what is a logical conclusion? Now tell me, is the answer going to be another conditional statement, or is it going to be just a simple statement? Sentence. How do you know? Because of this. See, if you just had these three, three conditional statements like that, you only can conclude a conditional statement. But once you put this in, you can use modus ponens, right? Yeah. You guys forgot modus ponens, look. A implies B. A, therefore, B. B. See? So, we, what we want to do is take these three conditional statements and then, you know, use the law of syllogism just to get one. So, which one am I going to start with? What do you think? You want to start with C. Why? Because of this. Look, A implies B. A. See how this has to be the same as that if you're going to use modus ponens. So since you have C here, what you want to get is C implies something. Now, how can I get that? Well, Mr. Park, this arrow goes both ways. Well, that's because it's biconditional. That means it can go either way. So you can either use this as F implies C or C implies F. In fact, on a previous homework problem, when you didn't you do a truth table for this? P implies Q. I mean, P if and only if Q. And then P implies Q and Q implies P. Wasn't this on logic 2, I believe? And didn't they come out logically equivalent? Yeah. yeah. This is the meaning of the if and only if statement. P if and only if Q means P implies Q and Q implies P. So that means you can use it either direction. So you use it in whichever direction is going to help you. In this case, we want C implies F, right? Because that's C implies. Okay, now, can I get F implies something from somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, the contrapositive of this. F implies not H. Now, can I get not H implies something? Yeah, the contrapositive of this. See how contrapositive is so important? Wow. Not H implies not G. So, just based on these three premises, what can I conclude? No, 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 no. No. C implies F. F implies this. This implies that. What can I conclude? C implies not G. Not G. What is this called? Law of syllogism. Now I have this. C, therefore, look, gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. banana. There you go. That's your answer. The goblins are not out. Yes. You just play in truth of true or false and no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Don't, do not make okay, true tables and things like that. Oh, like, you just put true or false on one letter, like... Yeah, but how do you know? Like C... But, no, but how do you know it's true? Because it says it is cold, so it's true, right? For cold? Okay, don't do that. <laughs> Were you here at last class on Friday? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah. Did I teach you how to, to, to do that or this? This. Okay. Don't, yeah, don't make, why do you want to make a whole method? That's how you get fatal errors. Yeah, that, that, that'll be very bad. Okay, next, number six. Where's number six? Okay, either logic is difficult, so what do you want to call that, L or D? Okay, D. Logic is difficult or not many students like it. What do we call it? M or S? L. L. Okay. L. Like it. Okay, not many students like it. If math is easy, then logical is not difficult. Many students like logic. So that would be S, right? What can you conclude? Oh, this is an easy one. Well, first you've got to symbolize. Did everybody symbolize it correctly? I'll take that for a yes. Can I change an or statement to a conditional? Oh. Yes, how? 
the gate the first, leave the second one alone. I'm telling you, that's super important. See how it came up multiple times on the homework? So notice that you have S there. So if I'm going to use modus ponens, you need S implies something. So we want to start with S implies something. How can I get that? A contrapositive of this. S implies D. Now can I get D implies something? The contrapositive of this. D implies not E. So just based on these two statements here, what can I conclude? S implies not E. But then S. Therefore, not E. So what, the, what, what does that mean? I forgot what E is. Easy. Easy. Math, so math is not easy. Which is kind of wrong because math is easy, right? See, that's why you don't want to have to rely on the truth or the falsity of the statements. You want to just rely on the form. That's why we call this symbolic logic. Okay, number seven. So, ah, number seven. We call this a logic puzzle. Have you guys done logic puzzles before? Who here went to Iolani uh, kindergarten? <laughs> Who had Mrs. Derby? One, only one person? Well, when my three kids had Mrs. Derby, she had logic puzzles. You guys were doing logic puzzles from kindergarten. Well, if you had Mrs. Derby. Anyway, you've never seen a problem like this before? Oh boy. Okay, so the best way to solve this kind of, how about, have you ever been to the airport before? And you go into the, the, news, the newsstand. They have all these magazines. You know what one of those magazines are? Or is logic. logic puzzles. It's just a whole bunch of logic puzzles. This is a super easy logic puzzle. This is like for kindergartners. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the easiest way to solve this is to make a three by three grid like this. So what, what do you got here? Moak, Oak, and Croak. These are the runners. Their coaches were Mike, Mike, and Tyke. So what you do is you go through the information and you put an X in something that cannot be true until there's only one cell left and that's got to be the answer. Except when you get the, when you go to the newsstand and you buy it, it's not going to be just 3 by 3, it'll be like 20 by 20. Wow. So that you can, you know, spend time to, you know, going through the information. He said, this is kindergarten. Okay, let's look at the information. Mike's runner, we're looking for the winner and his coach. Mike's runner nearly won. So did Mike's runner win? No. 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 So here's Mike. He just crossed out everything in his row because his, his runner did not win. We're looking for the winner. You cross out things that are impossible. Wow. You guys get it? Okay, next. Where, where, where is this? This was Volk's fifth race. Can I conclude anything from this? No. No, not yet. Not yet. The blonde-haired runner was coached by Tyke. Can I conclude anything from that? No. Not yet. The runner coached by Ike had not raced before, but this was Bogue's fifth race. What can I conclude from that? Ike, Ike could not have coached Bogue, right? So Ike could not have coached Bogue. Put an X in the cell right there. Everyone, you guys following? Mm -hmm. Moak broke his leg just after the start of the race. That means no way he could have won. Now some of you think are thinking, well, if I broke my leg, I could have won the race. <laughs> no, you couldn't. These are like these are high class runners. Wow, Wolf Gates. <laughs> so Moak, Moak could not have won. So here's Moak. Cross out everything in his column right there. See, we're narrowing it down. The winning runner was bald. But it says the blonde haired runner was coached by Tyke. So what? Tyke, Tyke's runner could not have won because, because he had blonde hair. So here's Tyke. See now, there's only one cell remaining, so what does that mean? Croak won and Ike was his coach. Wow. Right. But see, this is kindergarten, it's tree by tree. What if I give you one of the tests that's split? Well, I'm not going to give you 20 by 20 because that's not a big long time. How about 6 by 6 then? See, what happens is, on the, on the homework, you learn how to do the problems, and then on the test, I kick it up and up. So, three by three, all again. What if I make it four by four? That's good. Yes. 
Anyway, if you go on Google and type in logic puzzles, and there's a whole bunch of these that pop up in hours of fun. <laughs> Number eight, here is another logic puzzle. Now, for those of you on the math team, didn't you guys do these before? Weren't these on the worksheets? The marathon? Jay? You don't remember. Okay, now I'm going to just tell you how to do this one. And you guys do. How many people actually got it? Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to do it, and then you guys do it and see if you can get it. So you got Michael, Jermaine, Tito, and Marlon. You guys even recognize these names? Yeah. Tito from the Jackson 5. Yeah. You guys heard of the Jackson 5? What about Michael Jackson? Yeah. Well, when Michael, you guys, not even Michael Jackson. Who's <laughs> that? When, <laughs> when Michael Jackson was a... Kid, little kid, he was in a group called the Jackson Five with his brothers. That's, that's, that. that's Wait, four out of the five. Who's the one that's missing then? Janet. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Janet was younger, so she wasn't in the group. It was five brothers. Chris. Okay. Chris. Uh, <laughs> no. Lonzo. No, I <laughs> Michael and Jermaine. Oh, uh, um, 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 Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Jackie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it says, only one of them is a drummer. When questioned by the agent, the following statements were made. Okay, so I've got four statements. If exactly one of these statements is true, who is the drummer? So, when they give their statements, exactly one is true. You know? So, there's only four cases. It could be, he, his is true, and the other three is false. Is there another case? Yeah, his is this one is true, and the other three are false because exactly one of them said a true statement. What is there another case? Yeah. You. Yeah. This one is true, and the other three are false. And then the last case is this one is true, and the other three are false. Like that. So there's only four cases, so you sift through them one at a time until you hit the correct one. That's what you have to do. Unless you want to just take a guess. One out of four checks. But what if on the test get like six? Oh, they won't have six, Mr. Park. <laughs> this is killing me. Got you. Okay, let's go through the first one just, just to see how this works. Okay, so Michael said, now Michael is the only one that said a true statement, right? Everybody else's is false. So Michael said, Jermaine is the drummer, which is true. So doesn't that mean Jermaine is the drummer then? Yep. But Jermaine said, Marlon is the drummer. But that's a false statement. So Marlon is not the drummer. Oh. Tito said, I am not the drummer, but that's a false statement. I am the drummer. So then Tito, that means Tito is the drummer, but then Jermaine is the drummer, and you can only have one drummer, so therefore this case cannot be. So you, cross it out. so you just keep on going one at a time until you hit it. Now, you know what I like to do? I like to just make you go through all three. Probably, if I were me, I would make the last one the one, the correct one. <laughs> Was that the correct one? Yeah, that's so, where yeah. those of you did it. The last one is the correct one. Oh yeah, Mr. Park, next time I'm going to start from here. Yeah, but see, I'm going to give you like eight, and then I'll make one of the middle ones. <laughs> middle and oh, seven. But now that I told you that, I'm going to make one of the end. <laughs> but now that I told you that, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't tell you everything. So let's take a look at the practice test. So tomorrow, do I see you tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, we've got, we got a lot of things to do. we got to go over the quiz. we got to go over the practice test. And we got to learn the next chapter, which is chock full of information. See, so like today's class could be kind of easy. Tomorrow's class, not so easy. <coughs> anyway, this is a test I gave, uh, looking at... I'm looking at it because how many how many times how many years have I taught this class? It's my 31st year, so this looks like 20 something years ago. Whoa. But every year the test is very similar, except see in this one I went easy on them. I didn't they didn't have to say whether it's true or false. But you are going to no. tell me now who you are. <laughs> on this look how easy that is. State the converse of the contrapositive. Come on. What about number three? How we, no, I'm not going to tell you. But you guys are going to do it. So, how many problems are there? Seven. No, no, but no, no. But then look right here. That's six right there. Maybe. <laughs> you know what? Tomorrow when you walk in the room, I'm going to have the num numbers on there, on the board. So, you guys just fill it in. 
but we can't fit it all on the front board, so we'll just we'll go in waves. Yeah. First wave, second wave, we'll grade it and we'll see which class is smarter. Period five or period six. Yes, it's always a competition. <laughs> Alright, any questions on logic? We're done with logic. You, so right now you guys should know everything there is to know about logic. Okay, you got 15 minutes left. Let's use your time wisely. Why you, at least why don't you get to like number three? No, for number three, is that two, two, three, two tables then? No. Tell me. This is a test. Do what you think you should do, and then when I create it, you'll find out. The key to doing well on my test is don't get fatal errors. Everybody makes mistakes, but you get the minus one, minus two, that's fine. But when you get fatal error, minus eight, you do it multiple times. That's when it hurts. We're gonna get like a hundred of Oh, I gotta stop the video. Rambling on.